I think you need to go over there. Doing it best. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing really, really well. Today we have a very special guest here with us. This is my mum. Hi! So if you saw my last video, then you'll probably know that I am in the Lake District for a week at the moment. So we thought that while I am here, we would get mum to debut on my channel. I'm yeah, very nervous. She's very nervous. Be nice to her down below, say hello, give her a little wave in the comments. I'm sure she'll appreciate that. I will. What we're going to do today is we're just going to talk about mum's favourite books. Everyone will be interested to know what kind of books you like to read, so yeah. We'll go through them. And she's called Vicky, by the way. Oh, I'm called Vicky. Yes. She's pleased to meet you. Yes. <laughs> These are kind of an arbitrary five favourite books. I told her to pick five, but there are way more than this really, aren't there? There are lots and lots and lots. Do you want me to hold them up as we go? Yes. The first books, I say books, that books. mum books. is going to talk about are... Uh, Terry Pratchett, anything to do with Terry Pratchett, and this one's Terry Pratchett, Weird Sisters. So Terry Pratchett is your favourite author? Yes, I would say he is one of my very favourite, favourite authors. Yeah, and I grandmas. And grandmas. Both of them. <laughs> yeah. Nobody else in the family seems to get his sense of humour apart from me and grandma. Yeah, that's true. I think I tried to read We Free Men when I was younger, mm -hmm. but I think I was too young. And then I read Good Omens earlier this year. Yeah. Which didn't quite go to plan. <laughs> no, I just don't get why your sense of humour is not the same as mine. Yeah, I know, it it's very, it's very different. But Terry Pratchett, you've loved him for a very long time. I have loved Terry Pratchett since just about the beginning of his writing. Mm. Mm. And this is one of your favourites? It is one of my favourites. I mean, Terry Pratchett is broken into different characters. You have the witch characters, you have the City Watch characters, you have Death as a character, and then you have the We Free Men. And I love them all for different reasons. But the witches, which this is one of the witches books, are just brilliant. Cracking, as we say in Cumbria. I like them because they are so funny. You have Granny Weatherwax, who is the, the chief witch, the hag. And then you have Nanny Og, who is the mother. And their sense of humour is just brilliant. And I think he's particularly good for his world building as well, isn't he, Terry Pratchett? I mean, yes. he's a disc world. How he, how he imagined that place, I just do not know. I wish I could spend, I could have spent a day inside of his head. He'd be your answer. You know, and they always say things like, if you could take a, one of your favourite authors to tea, who would yes. you take? <laughs> oh, Terry Pratchett. Oh, it would have been wonderful. And to have sort of like Granny Weatherwax sat there and Death sat there and Samuel Vimes sat there. It would have been it would have been a brilliant, brilliant tea party. Well, if you say so. It would. So the next book, which is one of Mum's favourites, which she's gonna talk about, is The Little White Horse by Elizabeth Gooch. <laughs> Got it, was it by then? <laughs> is The Little White Horse by Elizabeth Gooch. This book has been with me, not this particular copy, I have another copy of it, has been with me for many years. The first time I heard this story was when I was about nine years old and your grandma read it to me and it was one of her favourite books. I think I've got her original copy. Mm, I think I've seen it. Yeah, but she's actually managed to pick up a first edition of it now, which I'm hoping for. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a children's fantasy novel. It is a children's fantasy novel. Yeah. And it's about a girl called Maria Merriweather mm -hmm. who is orphaned and she goes to live with her cousin in the Valley of Moonacre, which is a magical place. Yeah, I wouldn't say any more or Cameron will be telling you off for spoilers. Oh, will he? <laughs> yeah, he right. thinks that anything of our books are spoilers. What I would like to say, though, God. is the place where it's set, yeah. there are places round here where I live that remind me of it with so, the trees and the rolling hills yeah we live in the lake district well yes. mum lives in the lake district i'm from the lake district and it's just lovely this might be the only one on this list that i've read it is now mum was going to mention little women but i've talked about it so much that she's now not going to this is the only one that i've read and i also love this i've reread this 
Yes. I think I read it. I probably wasn't as young as you when I first read it, but I read it when I was quite young. I've read it a couple of times. It's a go-to comfort book. Yeah, it is. It, it is really, really good. I think I recommended it, actually. I think in one of my um, children's book recommendations. You did. Or fantasy recommendations, you, one of the two. You did. Basically, nobody had heard of it. No. Apart from a couple of people who commented on it saying um, that they were so pleased that I was mentioning it because it's a book that they loved from when they yes. were younger and that no one ever seemed to talk about it, so... No, it's quite nice. Yeah. They don't. It should be on everybody's reading list because the description is wonderful. Should be on everybody's reading list. It should be on you everybody's heard it. reading list. Okay. Two down, three to go. <laughs> like a talk show host. <laughs> so the next book that Mum's going to talk about is <laughs> is Lady of Hay by Barbara Erskine. Now it's quite a while since I've read this one. Have you reread this? I have reread it several times. This again is a new copy because my other one fell to pieces. It's about a lady called Jo who goes for hypnosis mm. and um, she ends up regressing into a past life where she was a lady of hay and in a very unhappy marriage. She ends up going back for hypnosis time and time again mm to see what happened in her past life. I've heard you talk about this before. I was, I've always thought this sounded quite good. There are several books that follow the same vein. You don't have to read them together. Right. You can read them separately from each other. But I believe that we, we've been born before. I know, I was going to say this, yeah. you're quite into your yeah. past lives I believe stuff. that we've been here before. The way it goes from this life to her past life. I just think it's brilliantly done and well, I it sounds like a good story. So it's historical fiction. It's historical fiction. Yeah, so I think there'd be quite a lot of people on booktube to be honest who'd be interested in that. I've never heard yeah. anyone talk about it. I would be interested to know if there are any other books out there like it because I would mm -hmm. I, I would uh, certainly pick them up and read them. I yeah, do like my one. historical fiction. Yes. I do like my Yeah, maybe we should have said this at the beginning what kind of books you like to read. Well, I certainly like fantasy. I certainly like historical fiction. Yeah, and I think can, that's yeah, they're the main two. They're Chil the main children's two. fiction, but children's fiction yeah. kind of crosses over with historical and fantasy, doesn't it? I love lots and lots of children's literature, um, and I think it's very important. And I also like books that um, are set in places that I know. Hmm. So the penultimate book on Mum's list is which one is this? Heaven's net is wide by Leanne Hearn. I would say historical fantasy. I don't know whether there is such a genre. This is um, the first book in a set of five and it's set in, for want of a better place, Japan. And it's about the Atori clan and the lives through three generations and Mm. They have some magical powers. It is so well written and again the description. This is another one that's pretty big. You do like a chunky. I do like a chunky. Now the first <laughs> book and the last book in this series were written after the middle three books were written. You can read one at the beginning, yeah. then the middle three and then the last one. Mm. And the first and the last one are chunky and the middle three are thinner books. They all follow the same family and what they get up to and Cameron read these. <laughs> Cam would like them. Yes, I think Cam would like them. Yeah, I do. But I thought he might like Good Omens, but that's another story. No, he didn't. I've just recently re listened to them on Audible. Oh, yeah. Was that good? Yes. Sometimes an audio book can make or break a book, can't it, depending on who's yes. narrated it. It can. There are actually two people narrating these ones oh. and um, and it worked really, really well. Not too bad, this is it. <laughs> Final book the mum's going to talk about today is The Hollow Land by Jane Gardam. This book has been, again, with me for a long time. I think I'm going to read the back bit if that's all right to you. It's all right. Inside the copy of this book, in the back, there is a message. <laughs> 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 no, no chance. <laughs> and this message was written to me by my gran, Jasmine's great gran. It says, to Vicky, from gran, or mom, because that's what I called her, in memory of grampy, that was my granddad, whose name was Kendall. Was this book is based on fact, but turned into fiction for entertainment. It was televised for children in the Jack and Ori series, 1985. So basically, 
This book, the Lady Jane Garden, used to visit Kirby Stephen, where I was born and brought up at, and she researched the area and the characters from the area, and she wrote this book based on the people that lived in and around Kirby Stephen, and uh, she used to stop up there with her family and her sons used to actually go around to play with your Uncle Mark. And my grandparents owned a fish and chip shop and there is a chapter in this book entitled Sweep. Mm. My granddad was a chimney sweep and he is in this book. She's written about him and my grand, but mainly my granddad, Grampy, and how he mm. uh, once went and called for them on a wet blustery horrible day and took them fishing and that really happened mm. so she's you know taken fact and put it into fiction and I recognize so many of these places and so many of these people in here and it tells the story from the perspective of a boy called Belle Teasdale. Oh that's a good one. Yes. That's a good one to end on. Yeah. And it won the Whitbread Literary Award in 1981. And we've all got a copy of it in our family. Well, I don't. Well, the people that matter. <laughs> they are mum's, well, some of mum's favourite books. They're very, 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 very small. Yeah. So perhaps in the future, mum will come back onto my channel again, depending on... Can be honest with me about how he's gone after the camera. Goes. <laughs> we'll have to see what my reviews are, won't we? Yeah. I'm not going to read them, I don't think. No, you will. It'll be nice. No. <laughs> It'll be very nice. I'll block them if they're not. Do. So that's going to be it for this video. I think we are done. Was it as scary as you thought it was going to be? Yeah, it was. All right. It was really, really scary. So thank you very much for watching, everyone. I hope you're doing really well. Hopefully, next time I see you, I will be in the new flat. That's oh, the plan. That's yeah. And then I'll be back into full flow with filming. I've got lots of good video ideas and I want to get back into the routine of doing it when everything settles down. And hopefully we'll have one of uh, yours and Cam's arguments going on. No. Nah. Oh, sorry. Discussions. 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 Yeah, um, a few people have requested that video now. I've heard you. They need to see it. Who do you think could win? Oh, you always. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Cam. <laughs> He's pretty good. He holds his own. But Oh, he does hold his own. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching, everyone, again. I hope you're all doing well. I hope you're having really nice weeks. Remember to say hi to Mum down below, and I'll talk to you in the comments, as always. And I'll see you soon with another video. Bye, everyone. Bye. I'm going to fall off my cushion. <laughs> I think the sun's gone away now for good. Do you? And Maria Weth... <laughs> um... What? I don't know. I just messed up. <laughs> just say what you said about the lady and she wakes up or she was a past life or something. I don't know. <laughs> what? I don't know. I just forgot what I was saying. <laughs> you forget what you were saying. <sighs>